Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson. And when I started keeping reef tanks, there were just a few lighting options for reefs. Really, it was VHOs, metal halides, and power compacts and T5s were just coming onto the scene. So that was 2006. By the time I set up my 90 gallon in 2012, I went with the biggest, baddest lighting system of the day, and that was metal halide and T5s. Fantastic lighting system as far as coloration and coral growth, growth goes. But there were downfalls, so eventually I pulled the light off the tank. Well, the other day, I was digging around in the basement, I ran across that old lighting fixture and decided to play with it and have some fun. So to begin with, I'm gonna show a little video of the stuff I shot downstairs. It's on my iPhone, so the audio might be a little iffy on it, but hey, it's gonna be a good start. You'll kind of start seeing how I got from there to here. So this all started off as just a laugh. I started playing with this old Odyssey light and decided I'd strip the pendants. Um, this light had issues with it. The last time I was using the metal halides, the bulbs kept burning out. And I don't know if that was an issue with the ballast, the bulbs or what. And then the real killer to this light, this ballast for the T5s went out. It's right in the center. This thing doesn't come apart easily. So I never switched it out. So this thing's been sitting around for about seven years. So I've decided I would strip out the metal halides. I think I'm gonna go ahead and save the fans and stuff like that. Maybe these reflectors, I'll save the good stuff, throw the rest away, make some rooms, and then play with some bulbs. All right, I have the first light temporarily wired up. Yeah. Um, I am not an electrician, so do not follow my guides on wiring. But hey, it's a result. This light is lit. I've got the old ballast hooked up to it. So let's wire up the other one and see how we do. Test two, I've got two working lights. I don't want to leave them on long. These get real hot. They're just directly on the carpet. But I've got two working lights, two working ballasts. Hell yeah, we are off to some interesting ideas. All right, so I've just put the two metal halides on the tank. So for lighting on this tank now, I have five LEDs. So we've got three Kessel A3160Xs, and then on the ends, we have two 160s, kind of is spotlights on the side. And then I've got four T5 bulbs, and then I've got basically a Kessel, the metal halide, a Kessel, a metal halide and a Kessel. So as you can see, I wasn't able to center the metal halides up. Um, right here is a hole and I couldn't put the metal halide over that hole. So they're a little offset, which means the light is pushed a little to the back of the tank instead of centered, which is kind of okay considering the amount of light we have. They're both that way. So there's gonna be some issues with that. I may end up moving the A360s forwards to kind of account for that. But for the most part, I'm really happy with the look. So we'll have to see how this does over the long term. I'm the first to admit that the lighting on this tank is pretty crazy at this point. I've got five LEDs, four tubes of T5s, and now two metal halides. It's real overkill but it may be the perfect lighting system. I really don't know. And that's what I wanna find out. Metal halides were amazing lights for so many reasons. The spectrum they put out was really awesome. It's a big, wide spectrum. And when you get to the 20Ks, they were relatively blue. But anybody who's been keeping LEDs over their reefs lately knows what real blue looks like. We run those ultra blues these days and compared to those, the 20K light looks almost white. It's crazy how light blue the 20K metal halide is compared to the LEDs. But the spectrum should be really good. The other thing that metal halide's gonna give me that I cannot get out of 
LEDs or T5s is a lot of UV. Now there are UV options and my Kessels have that violet or near violet, but nothing puts out the UV that you get from a metal halide. In fact, metal halides usually have a glass cover over the bulb to protect against the UV. So I might be throwing way too much UV at this tank. It's a real possibility. So it's something I've got to watch and I've got to monitor. But here's my thought on UV. So any coral that lives near the surface is going to be used to UV in the wild. I mean, you've got the sun of the tropics beating down on it. There is no shade. They have to be able to take the full UV of the sun in full light. So the near surface highlight corals should be able to handle crazy amounts of UV. Same reason I get crazy sunburned in the summer. Now, the corals that live deep down, I also believe are gonna use that UV. Because as you go deeper and deeper, your colors start to fall off. And really, as you go down, you follow the spectrum of the rainbow until you drop from blue to violet to ultraviolet. So UV is the light that's gonna penetrate the deepest. So my theory is, is that deep down corals are gonna love UV. Now, I've got no way to measure it, so I don't know how much UV I'm actually getting off my lights, whether it's the LEDs or the metal halides. So I really am not gonna be able to make a real scientific comparison on this. But what I should be able to see is, does increasing the amount of light from a metal halide make a major difference in this tank? Now, it's clear that I've increased my spread. Part of my problem is my corals are growing so near the surface that at this point I need to raise my kessels up to get more spread. Well, instead of doing that, I've just grown two metal halides on there. So it'll increase my spread, it'll increase my total amount of par, and it's gonna make a big difference in spectrum. I have those metal halides plugged into the T5s. So they're gonna run about six hours a day. And I'm gonna watch this like a hawk because there could be problems. First, I don't have that glass on there, so I might burn my coral. First, I'm having a lot of light, plus that UV could be a problem. Also, in the old days, I heard claims about people sunburning their fish by not having that cover on their light. So I have to be ultra careful. So I have the lights on now. While I'm home, I'm gonna monitor it and see how things do. When I'm working, when I'm sleeping, those are gonna be off until I'm confident I can run them without causing major problems. So this is a real experiment that I'm not telling people to try. The other problem I'm gonna run into is with heating. So I've turned the big fans on, so you can you probably hear some of that over the microphone. So I've got the fans on to help blow air over the tank to help keep the tank cool because that was one of the problems with metal halides is your tank would overheat. But I'm also worried about overheating my Kessels. Um, LEDs are very expensive. Light heats the killer of LEDs, so we wanna make sure we don't overheat the Kessels. Now I should be okay if things get too hot, they should automatically shut off. And before they get too hot, we'll get a warning on the screen. So I'm gonna monitor that and see how I do. So first I gotta watch, so now I gotta watch for temperature fluctuations and we'll see how it goes. The other problem I'm gonna run into is really metal halides need to change once a year. Because like any incandescent fluorescent metal halides, they lose spectrum and par over time. I have no idea how old these bulbs are as far as runtime goes. These bulbs are probably seven years old right now, but how long they were actually ran, I do not remember at this point. So a new set of bulbs would go a long way. But before I add new bulbs, I'm gonna go ahead and just test the lights and see what they do. Um, another concern I've gotta watch is without that glass on there, if I have any sort of splashing from the tank or anything like that, I could end up breaking a bulb, glass could get in the tank, so it is a concern. So everything I'm doing today is 
full experimental, it's overkill, and as of right now, this is not the lighting system I would recommend to anybody unless they're wanting to experiment like I am. But I think my path forward is clear and the potential gains could be amazing. My real cost going forwards, if this works, is I'm gonna have to spend more money on bulbs, electricity is gonna be high, and I've really gotta make sure we don't overheat the tank. So, I'm taking a gamble, but I might have just taken my lighting system to the next level. I hope I did. So thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me about your experience with Metal Halides. I really wanna know. Personally, I had great success years ago, but I don't know if that's me being a bit romantic about the old days, or if they were really that good. We'll see you on the next one and I'll let you know how this goes.